Welcome back to Primitive Organic Garden. Thank you all for tuning in today. I'm going to try to keep this video extremely brief because I just recorded this entire video and right in the middle of it YouTube cut me off and said you have reached the maximum length for this video. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm live uploading it from my phone. I can't imagine it was more than 10 minutes or so and I think I've made longer videos in the past but anyway YouTube cut me off so I'm going to kind of rush through this. Uh, this is some of my winter broccoli I planted from a uh, transplant in the late fall. It was like after Thanksgiving when I put the transplants in. Um, we had a fairly warm winter. We had maybe one or two days where it got quite cold. We had a morning where it was 26 Fahrenheit. That particular day it was also under 32 for at least 12 hours or so. But the broccoli seemed to do okay. Um, no damage. Um, I'm really excited about all the broccoli. It's my first year growing it. Um, I was mainly interested in growing it for the greens. I'm a big fan of eating broccoli greens. Uh, they taste better than collard greens to me. They're a lot sweeter. The leaves are a little bit tougher, so you might have to cook them a little bit longer. This head's a little bit misshapen. I'm not sure why, but um, the greens are pretty um, good, independent of the head. Um, this one needed to be harvested like a week ago, but I wanted to make sure I got a good picture or video of the broccoli before I started harvesting it. Um, it's interesting to note that this plant produced a massive grocery store sized head in a tiny little one gallon dollar store pot. Um, it's a very, very small broccoli plant, but apparently tiny little broccoli plants can still produce massive heads. So I guess there's no reason to, uh, you know, put them in large amounts of soil or, you know, try to give, you know, the plant a bunch of fertilizer and make it a giant plant. Apparently tiny little plants will still produce huge heads. So that's kind of an interesting little side note there. Um, lots of collard greens. Man, I can't believe I'm completely recording this video all over again because YouTube cut me off. Uh, this is a tomato here. I got brave and stuck a tomato outside even though it's February. Um, statistically, we can still get frost all the way until like March 30th. There's a 50% chance, but there's some years where we don't get frost at all. Uh, this year we've had quite a few frosts already, but um, I don't really think we're going to get a whole lot more. So I went ahead and got bold and stuck a tomato out here out in the open. There's a couple more tomatoes I planted out in the open. There's also some leeks in here. Um, we're going to quickly look at some more uh, broccoli and containers and some chard, uh, spinach, mustard. Got lots of barley coming on. The barley's looking real good. It's a little bit nitrogen deficient, so you can see it's a little lime green, but the barley still looks pretty. Uh, this is a brand new uh, like cougar culture I set up in the fall. Um, mostly just radishes and lettuce right now, doing pretty good. Uh, got some mustard greens, spinach, garlic, mustard, daikons, radishes, uh, collard greens. Uh, got some more collard greens, lots of barley, crimson clover, broccoli, fava beans, spinach, garlic. Uh, lots of mustard covered in aphids. Had aphids all through January. Apparently aphids can survive sub-freezing temperatures, which surprised me. I got lots of uh, collards here. Got a little farm dog. Farm dog! Farm dog! Come say hi. Come here. Come say hi. Farm dog. Little tiny dog for a little tiny farm. Hey, come here. Okay. Okay. Hey. Hey. Collard greens are looking pretty good. More collards, mustard, spinach, crimson clover, got peas, turnips, collards. Got some more tomatoes I'm about to plant, asparagus, leeks. Oh, the fava beans look so good. It's my first year doing fava beans. Fava beans are uh, an important winter survival crop. They're uh, the earliest plant-based source of protein available. Um, there's plenty of, you know, winter vegetables that do quite well here. I think, you know, it's actually easier to produce food here in the winter than the summer. Um, but uh, in terms of protein, there's not necessarily a lot of things that grow in the winter. You know, summer you got all your different beans and your grains, but in the winter, uh, fava beans, that's going to be one of your earliest producing sources of protein for uh, spring. It's a cold weather bean. Um, 
I think I tried fava beans one other year and I planted them too late. I planted them like in March or April and you know the heat killed them before they produced but I planted these in I don't know November, December and a lot of them seem like they're doing pretty well. Um, Alright I guess YouTube's gonna cut me off soon so I got this big uh, mess of spearmint weeds uh, all kinds of other stuff. Got my monoculture at Daikon that are planted in the shade and they're way overcrowded so I'm just gonna slowly harvest those through spring and early summer. Got a bunch of green onions, radishes, arugula, this is the compost pile, um, bunch of bunch of radishes, garlic, avocado tree, crimson clover, uh, more daikon radishes, another broccoli, oh these broccolis look so good, a um, bunch of arugula, spinach, arugula, bunch of collard greens, spinach, garlic, leeks, my loquat tree, some oregano, more garlic, radishes. Uh, this is one of my seed started uh, citrus trees. Got some garlic, another tomato, blueberry bush. This is my herb garden here. Got cilantro, dill, um, parsley, oregano. Got a little farm dog. Hey farm dog. Hey farm dog. Got some purple mustard, some carrots, a bunch of peas. Um, I think in the last video that I filmed, I was looking at the hoop house and talking to y'all about how, like, because today it was 75 degrees outside in full sun. It was like 100 degrees in the hoop house. And I've been having to water a lot in here. And, you know, most everything in here loves the heat. I got all the hot peppers, the chocolate habaneros. I got the ghost cayenne, chiles. I got all kinds of chili peppers. Um, I got serrano peppers. Uh, I think a rat's been eating my peppers. Um, I got all kinds of different peppers. And the citrus trees and the peppers all seem to love the hoop house. The only reason I build this thing every year, my $40 shitty hoop house, is because, you know, it keeps my citrus trees happy in the winter and everything else is just a side benefit. Um, I got all these seed started citrus trees. But anyway, uh, I was looking in here earlier and everything seems to like the heat. Even when it gets up to 100 degrees or so, the peppers are pretty happy, but the tomatoes aren't too happy with 100 degree temperatures. And also I got stuff like collard greens in here and they'll tolerate the heat, but you know, they don't really like it. Um, also, if anybody knows what this is, I think it's some type of green Italian dandelion, chicory greens, but I got a lot of it. Um, it's getting huge, I need to harvest it. I'm not really sure what it is. If anybody knows exactly what this is, please let me know. Um, there's a ton of it. Um, anybody's particularly familiar with this crop please tell me what this is I think it's a green dandelion Italian chicory thing um, anyway I'm trying to keep this video short before YouTube cuts me off again but uh, I've been watering a lot in here because it's been getting super hot in here during the daytime um, I got this eggplant that I overwintered my first year growing eggplant one thing about overwintering things when you overwinter a crop that's normally grown as an annual like a eggplant or a tomato or a pepper you have to remember that you also overwinter all of its pests and associated diseases I don't worry too much about the pests even though overwintering this eggplant and all these peppers and things may have you know allowed me to overwinter aphids and argentine ants and uh, fire ants and all kinds of things like that at least you know when I put these things outside there's natural enemies your garden kind of has an immune system you know you have all these natural enemies out there and they'll take care of a lot of the pest issues but the disease is not so much, so if I overwintered this eggplant this year, I also overwintered any diseases that it might have had, and that could potentially negatively affect this year's crop of eggplant, peppers, and tomatoes, and all the related things. So, anyway, just remember that when you do overwinter things that normally are grown as annuals, you've also allowed for a reservoir for all the pests and diseases that, you know, normally would not um, be there in the off season, so. Lots of chard. Lots of chard. Beets doing okay. Whew, it is hot in here. Alright, well, uh, thank you all for tuning in today. It's been a pretty good garden update. I'm annoyed I had to record it twice. Hopefully I got most everything I wanted to talk about in. Showed you all most of the new things in the garden. Kind of some updates on the other things that are going on. Mainly just harvesting tons of daikon radishes and making kimchi. About to harvest lots of broccoli. 
going to be harvesting collards and mustard for the next